In this video, I'm going to show you how to practice digital minimalism so that you can have increased clarity, increased focus, remove anxiety, and just profoundly change your life. Before we begin, what the hell is digital minimalism and what's a digital minimalist? Digital minimalism is a philosophy or practice in which you are more deliberate with your use of technology. That means you only use the technologies, the social medias uh, and apps that greatly impact your life and you keep away from those other ones that are just distractions. We're living in a society now where it's kind of normal to be on your phone all the time. Uh, human connection is being severed. People are getting distracted. The dopamine in their brain is going crazy and they have lost the ability to focus on meaningful work and to uh, tap back in to nature and just life. That's becoming more distant. Kids these days, if you see them playing along, they're not playing games with each other. They're on their iPads watching YouTube videos. And this is a big problem because this goes against our nature from a physiological standpoint, from an evolutionary standpoint. Human beings are meant to be social creatures. We're not meant to have so much stimulus coming our way. And that's a big problem. We're also living in an age filled with immense opportunity, filled with uh, so much possibility where a lot of the things that are possible now would just extinct, could, could not have happened 20, 30 years ago. And people are not taking advantage of these uh, opportunities because they're distracted. So how can you be a digital minimalist? I've got a couple of tips for you. Tip number one, don't use Facebook unless you're on a desktop and only use it at selected times. The notification bell is possibly one of the most destructive inventions ever created by human beings. Something about that bell flickering up all the time whenever you get a notification regardless of how trivial it is, someone tagging you or someone inviting you to like a page is just addictive and we can't uh, keep ourselves away from it. The reason it's addictive is because it's random. We don't know when it's gonna happen. It's called intermittent positive reinforcement. It's the same exact technology that casinos use on those slot machines. Those slot machines actually make casinos a lot more money than poker or any other gambling activity because of the randomness that's involved with them. You never know when you're gonna win, whether it's 50 cents or $100 or $5,000. You just gotta keep playing, keep playing all night long, drinking. It's the same exact thing with our phones. The more notifications you get, the more uh, you click on them, you start creating that loop in your brain, that habit loop where you have to do it and you no longer are in control. So to remove that, it's not about turning off the notifications because that's not good enough. It's just about removing the app completely from your phone. Trust me, you don't need to be on Facebook all the time. Uh, most of the stuff that happens there is not even that important. Most of the stuff that uh, tries to grab your attention, you're gonna forget about in a couple of seconds. So have a designated time to go on Facebook. Maybe you're gonna check your Facebook every day for 30 minutes. Have a slot, maybe 7.30 to 8 p.m. before you eat dinner or after you eat dinner and stick to it. I personally don't go on Facebook that often because I find it to be a huge distraction. I used to spend hours and hours on Facebook when I was younger and uh, it didn't contribute to my life in any way, it just creates anxiety. Same thing with Instagram. Unless you're posting on Instagram or you're getting some sort of value from Instagram, you probably should just delete the app it's not helping you in any way. It's just making you have more anxiety, uh, making you compare yourself to others. Here's the thing, a couple of years ago, well not a couple of years ago, but like maybe 50 years ago, 60 years ago, you might have lived in a town and you might have had a skill, maybe you're good at guitar. And because you didn't know too many people, the world wasn't as connected as it is today, you were the go-to guy for guitar playing. If someone wanted to learn how to play guitar, they'll come up to you, they'll say, hey, John is really good at playing guitar or maybe you're good at tennis or, so everybody had something that made them unique, that made them feel good. These days with social media, there's always 20 other people that are better than you. There's always a seven year old Asian kid that's going to destroy you at whatever you do. So it's very easy to feel insecure. It's very easy to uh, feel anxious. So get rid of Instagram. If you're not using it for business, it's just a waste of your time. So that's the first tip. Facebook and Instagram have got to go, have scheduled times. Second tip, 
Stop listening to music every single time to distract yourself. Don't have music as an outlet to distract yourself. I used to listen to music. I used to listen to audiobooks all the time whenever I would walk to the shops or I'll be doing my shopping. Use that time to become more mindful, to become more present to your environment. So once again, have set times or set activities where you listen to music. Perhaps you go to the gym and you do cardio. That's perfectly okay. You can listen to music there. But make sure that you're always going back into nature. You're getting in tune with your environment. I like to go for walks in the morning, uh, usually around 20 to 30 minutes and there's no music, no phones. Actually, my phone um, at home, just take my wallet with me and I go for a walk. And it's very peaceful and it's very nice. And the human body needs that outlet, needs that space to think and to process its thoughts. What happens today is that we're constantly getting bombarded by inputs. We're constantly getting bombarded by marketing messages, by advertising, by pictures, by videos, by images that it kind of scrambles our brains. Our brains don't have that time to just relax, to just process their own thoughts. And you end up living a life that has nothing to do with you, a life that's been uh, strategically engineered by advertisers, by other people who have entered into your subconscious mind and influenced your behavior. So you need time to just kind of go back to being a normal human being. We are animals, so be present, pay attention to your breathing, Go for a nice walk. Number three, only check emails in the afternoon or in the morning. Don't keep checking emails throughout the day. A lot of us, you know, uh, we work or we have businesses that require us to check our emails. But you have to understand, most of the email messages you're getting are not pressing, are not urgent. So it's a good idea to have a set time to look at them. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time just replying to emails, cleaning out your inbox or uh, checking your spam for It's just a big waste of time. It doesn't serve you. Have a set time where you check your emails. Even tell people, this is my set time where I check my emails. So if you have something to send that's urgent, send it there. Or if it's really urgent, give me a ring, right? So that just creates a bit of boundaries in your life and allows you to be a lot more clear in regards to how you handle your business. Number four. No more long discussions on Messenger. Instead of having this back and forth conversation with someone on Messenger and pretending that that's a meaningful conversation, stop it. Give that person a ring and schedule a meetup or schedule lunch and go have a real life interaction with that person. The reality is real life interactions and their subtle nuances, all these little things that happen, the dynamics uh, from social, social situations do a lot more to us than just text. There's millions, if not billions of bits of data that your brain is processing. Even more than what someone is saying from a uh, subconscious level, from a subliminal level, their subcommunication, the things they're doing are speaking volumes than their words. So you need that interaction to bond with people, to better connect with people than just uh, sending them a message or sending them a happy birthday on their Facebook post. Go see them, go visit them, talk to them. I'm sure you've felt it before. You, when you have a good conversation with someone, uh, you tend to remember those conversations, right? You might have had a conversation while uh, drinking with your friends or something like that and you went really deep and you were more vulnerable. You remember those conversations compared to just a quick group chat with the boys or whatever on Facebook. It, do, it doesn't do anything for you. So make it a habit to schedule time to meet up with your family, to meet up with your friends and have quality conversations. You're going to get more from those. They're going to enhance your relationship a lot more and you, it's just going to be great. Number five, have some more analog activities that you can do for fun. So instead of just playing video games all the time, like your, you know, your Xbox One or your PS4 or playing games on your phone, get some board games or get a book or learn to play an instrument. Do something with your hands, build something, fix something. These activities that require you to use your hands, that require you to move your body in motion and um, not be so entranced into some virtual game or whatever, they tend to be more fulfilling. They tend to do something more 
for you than just playing video games. When you're playing video games, you don't really get much out of that. But when you're reading a book, you get a lot. But when you're learning a new language or you're playing an instrument, your brain is really changing for the better. And a lot of those changes can be transcended from that one activity to something else. People that tend to be good at Xbox don't really transition to being good at anything else besides Xbox. Whereas if you're good at playing a musical instrument, you might find that those skills, the ability to learn uh, impacts you in other areas of life. So those are the five areas in which I practice digital minimalism. If you want to find out where you are weak, uh, the easiest thing you can do is go on your phone and check your screen time. See how many, which apps you spend most of your time on, right? Maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's Instagram. Now ask yourself, is this thing adding value to my life or taking away value from my life? Am I moving forward because of this or am I moving backwards? If you're moving backwards, get an app blocker app. There's a lot of good ones. I use one called app block. You can just add those apps and schedule the time when you are able to use them and the rest of the time they're gonna be blocked. So whenever you try access them, it's just gonna block your ass. And that is how you can practice digital minimalism. Do this. And I promise you, you'll be one step closer to living and dying well. Oh yeah, make sure you subscribe too. That, that does help. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications so we can see more of each other. Until next time.